Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, when John Coleman and I are going to be speaking to Dr. Liz Lister about what topic, John? We're going to talk to Dr. Liz about grilling. Good mm. to see you again, Dr. Liz. Likewise. Thank you so now, much. It's that season. I've fired up the grill. We're ready to do everything from steaks to hot dogs to salmon. You name it. We put it on the grill. We get those nice dark lines across them. What's wrong? What could possibly be wrong with grilling? It's the, it's it's man's favorite sport. It's definitely a wonderful activity when the weather gets warmer. And you're absolutely right. I'm sure a lot of people are firing up their grill. The question is, have you all heard about the charring, the blackening on meat possibly being bad for you? Have you heard what? of that? Yeah, I have. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, but John, I'm, plant, I'm a plant-based guy. So I, I, I would have heard of these things through my network. Well, Indeed. I, I'm sure it's not just meat. If you, if you charred your broccoli, it might be bad for you too. But let's get back to the, the core here. Uh, now, I love blackened um, steak and, and blackened uh, fish. Yes. Uh, that's that's mostly yes. a pepper uh, covering and then it's charred. Right. But that is, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the, the meat on the grill and the dark, the burning of the meat, I guess. Correct, so. correct. That's exactly right. Now, true confessions, I also love meat. You all know my family's from Argentina. And so we love meat, we love grilling. And it's exactly that. It's the charring. What happens? Are you ready for a long, fancy word? Heteros sure. Heterocyclic amines, or HCAs for short. HCAs are what form in that blackening, that charring that gives, I think, a delicious flavor to the meat. However, the HCAs have been shown to damage DNA. Now, of course, none of this is 100% of the time. Okay, so as we always say, everything in moderation. But the HCAs, if they damage DNA, that's what can lead to increased risks of illness, for example, some cancers, especially the digestive tract. So stomach, uh, the gut, colorectal cancer, those are associated with higher intake of these kind of charred meats that contain these HCAs that are hurting the DNA. Let me ask you a wow. question though. Uh, are we talking about the grills that you're using charcoal briquettes? Uh, does this also happen with gas? Is it something in the meat? Or is it something coming from the source of the uh, 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 fuel? It's the combination. The, that's a very good mm. question because one of the ways to do this, to reduce the uh, HCA content of the grilled foods is to lower the temperature. And there's a few ways to do that. And you just mentioned what kind of fuel you use. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not the griller in our family. And by the way, grilling is absolutely a thing in Argentina. Okay, anybody with a house has what's called a quincho in the backyard. And it's not just a grill. It's got all kinds of levers and pulleys so you can raise and lower the meat. It's, yes. it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. Yes, How, it's, it, it's, it sounds like the barbecue folks of the, of the South. Yeah. Yes. That's right. It's it's a big deal. But what you were saying, Art, about the fuel, that does make a difference. There are other there are fuels that burn at a lower temperature, and that's gonna be able to cook the meat. We'll, we'll talk about fish in a minute, because fish is actually a little better. It has less of a tendency to make those HCAs, those DNA damaging HCAs. But lowering the temperature in some way. Another way that is I'm not sure a lot of people do this, but you know that they do this in commercial settings. For example, at ski slopes, when they want to prepare, places that want to prepare burgers really quickly, they will partially cook the meat first. And that's a good way to lower the risk, to lower the charring and the HCA, because it'll cook, it'll cook more quickly on the grill. So you get that yummy grilled flavor, but with less time on the grill. So that's actually one of the ways to uh, 
uh, help this situation and make this uh, these grilled foods more healthy. This is fascinating. And so I want to get back to, uh, and again, I um, a lot of these things we, we just discuss when we get together, we come up with some topics that uh, you've done some research on or that pique our interest that we don't necessarily do a whole lot of research before. But John brought up something about... Um, uh, would that also apply to things like uh, broccoli or asparagus and things like that? And so the question I have is, so it's more in the meat has something in it that can generate these things as opposed to other things like plants or fish, for instance, has less of whatever those agents are that might be attached. Does that sound somewhat correct? So I shouldn't be yes. worried about putting asparagus yes. on the grill? Yes, absolutely. And also fruit. I love grilled fruit. Absolutely delicious. Mm, but that's right. exactly right. So fish has less of a tendency to make these HCAs. And there's one other part of meat, which is also a little bit in fish, but definitely in meat that contributes to the potential risks of the grilled process. And that is the fat. Okay. So for example, the fat on the meat will smoke. You know what I'm talking about? Give mm -hmm. kind yeah. of the, the fat yeah. the, when the fat burns. Besides the HCAs and the charring, the fat. Okay, here's another fancy term: polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. It kind of makes sense, right? Aromatic. We know it's aromatic. We know it yeah. smells nice. Yeah. Okay, and that's in the smoke, and that's also not good for our health. Okay, so if there's less fat, if you trim the fat from the meat to some extent, that's going to be helpful. And then, of course, veggies aren't going to have that. Veggies and fruit are not going to have that type of uh, fat content that can make those PAHs or those HCAs. Yeah. Now, you you mentioned the, I can't even pretend to say it, the, the aromatic thing. Right, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. With, with fat. Yes. Uh, what, does that... Is that a whole different problem? Because think of people who smoke meat, smoke right. salmon, yes. smoke, uh, particularly smoke barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, is that a whole different problem than the char? I think it is. It is definitely different because smoked foods aren't necessarily charred. Right. I, again, I'm not the griller. I know lots of people who have like a smoker. And, it, and they like that smoky flavor that it gives to the foods. Yes. So again, we've got this concern about the red meat where fish is going to be better. And then you can always do these with the veggies and fruits. Yeah. Uh, however, but the smoking process is different than what we're talking about. We're talking about burning fat and it right. create the, and the smoke that it creates. That's what, oh, I'm, I see. That's, okay. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad, glad you clarified that. Yeah, because uh, I can still have my barbecue. Oh <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so, and and also the smoker people who have smokers, those those are different. I yeah. believe that those are different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a big world out there of uh, grilling and smoking and barbecue and all that stuff. And I I don't mean to be rude, but I'm not giving it up. Well, but but because but, I don't want you to be as anxious, John, as you might otherwise become. So I think that what might help ameliorate your anxiety would be to make sure that you drink a couple of glasses of wine before you start grilling. Okay. Oh, okay. And then right. just continue on through the night. If you insist. I do. I have a, a pro tip. Here's a okay. ready, for, ready for a pro tip for the grillers yes, yes. out there listening and want to be healthy and reduce their health risks. Scrub the grill clean the grill really well. The okay. char that's left on the grill from a previous time, that contributes to what we're talking about in terms of the health risks. So a nice clean grill, turn up the heat at the end, get all that stuff to, to go away so you can scrub it off. So the yeah. cleaner you leave the grill, the better for your health. Yeah. Well, that, that's, I think, a pretty common practice among most people. So hopefully. Um, but good advice, because not everybody um, feels that way. Yeah. Well, Dr. Liz, this is absolutely fascinating. Certainly opened my eyes. 
Um, I don't know that I'm ready to change any uh, grilling habits yet because uh, I already cleaned the grill. Uh, but I, I've got to look into this more. This is terrific stuff. Thank you so much. Pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.